As concerns grow over the debt crisis in Greece, questions are being raised about how the situation was allowed to get so out of control in the first place. For more on that, we are joined once again by Robin Farzad, a senior writer for Bloomberg Business Week. Welcome back. Hi, Martin. All right. Um, this is a bit confusing, so let's try to follow along. There have been reports of several American financial service companies, how they helped Greece to sort of mask how bad the financial situation was in that country. How did that work? On a day-to-day -day level, yes, Greece is the word. But this is much more about juking the stats. This is about something bigger that we've seen in corporate America, that we've seen with Wall Street very much, very often over the past 10 years. And that's gaming loopholes, finding loopholes, and exploiting them to the max until the situation is no longer tenable. In this case, it was enabling uh, Greece and other European Monetary Union governments, ostensibly, to be able to look more uh, healthy financially than they actually were by pushing out obligations, a kind of a financial alchemy that lets you mortgage the ranch and, and, and kick you know, these obligations down the road and be able to say, well, we're in great shape right now, so we can afford to loan money at certain rates. All right. And then we have today the New York Times reporting that some of the same companies uh, are betting against Greece. That is, that their, their investors are likely to uh, financially gain if Greece were to go under. This is the delicious um, information asymmetry that Wall Street has always enjoyed. It's a clear conflict of interest. Yes, and conflict is Wall Street's middle name. And how many times have you seen that time and time again? If you know, if, if, if in the halls of these uh, vaunted investment banks are whispers that Greece and Portugal and Spain are not actually as hale as they appear on the surface, well, we can um, tip off our own prop traders, our proprietary traders, and our clients to bet against the situation. So it's the best of both worlds. These uh, investment banks, they are very different from you and me. Well, do you think then this is going to bring about a further crackdown on the banking practices in Europe? You know, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me thrice. Uh, this is going to be very late regulation, too late to the game. It'd be very helpful if uh, the international monetary regimes, the EMU, the Federal Reserve, the SEC, were on this scene a couple of years ago when these tactics were fomenting. But this is going to be after-the-fact regulation. Again, one thing you have to remember, the evergreen idea here is that Wall Street is paid to game the system. It's paid a lot of money to game the system, and it doles out a lot of money to the smartest guys, the smartest wizards, the smartest alchemists to go out there and exploit loopholes. So governments have to be especially prescient about closing these loopholes before they open. How do you see this uh, European debt crisis playing out then? Greece has bills. They're multiplying. And it's going to get worse. 17 billion euros in debt comes due uh, between April and May. And somebody's going to have to bail them out, whether it's the EMU or the IMF. And it's going to get worse. Do you think other countries will follow? Uh, Greece, Greece is an indicator species. Right now, they're saying after Greece comes Portugal, Spain, Italy. People are talking about Britain, which is not you know, a euro-denominated country. But this shows when the tide goes out, we see these exposures. Robin Farza, as always, thank you. Thank you, Martin.